I'm Curtis Patrick, lead Dynasty football writer for Pro Football Focus Fantasy, and you're watching Dynasty 2-Minute Drill. Jarek McKinnon burst onto the scene back in 2014 at the NFL Combine when he was one of the most outstanding athletes of the entire week and certainly at the running back position. He ended up being drafted in the third round by the Minnesota Vikings to potentially be a change of pace back or maybe even the eventual heir to the Adrian Peterson throne. Well, it didn't really go as planned in the first two seasons for McKinnon or his dynasty owners. He, he managed 20-plus receptions in each of those campaigns, but really never carved out a meaningful role. Wasn't really usable uh, in, in fantasy on a week-to-week -week basis, or really at any point in either of those seasons. In 2016, McKinnon finally got a bit of a shot. He posted over 40 receptions and finished the year as PPR running back 29, had some flex utility, and even got the start a couple times. In 2017... That, that whole dynasty outlook took a, a massive downturn because the team drafted Dalvin Cook in the second round. They even traded up for him. So dynasty owners, including myself, I, you know, I, I was playing taps for McKinnon at that point in terms of him ever really breaking out. Well, Cook got hurt early in the season, and McKinnon finally got that chance to have a, a major role uh, as a fantasy back. And he did not disappoint. Finished the year as PPR running back 17 and had over 51 receptions. Now, fast forward to the to the offseason, he finds himself married to Kyle Shanahan, and now he's one of the top five highest paid running backs in the entire league. Well, what has Shanahan done for his fantasy running backs in the last several seasons? Because I think as dynasty players, we need to understand what's the offense uh, look like that McKinnon's going into, and, and what has Shanahan done for his guys? Because that's going to tell us everything we need to know about whether McKinnon's a buy or sell. Well, in 2017, Shanahan didn't disappoint in his first uh, season in San Francisco when he exhumed the fantasy corpse of Carlos Hyde. Hyde had been a major disappointment so far in his career, but Shanahan peppered him with over 80 targets and, and ended up propping up Hyde as the running back 11 in PPR. I mean, I didn't see that coming. Anyone who said that they saw that coming um, would have been basing it off of what Shanahan did for Devontae Freeman the previous two years. It certainly didn't have anything to do with Hyde uh, from a talent perspective or from the 49ers uh, as a team overall perspective. Well, speaking of Freeman, when, when Shanahan was in Atlanta in 2015 and 2016, Freeman was, was, was arguably the best running back in fantasy for two consecutive years. In 2015, he was the overall running back one in PPR, and in 2016, he followed that up with an RB6 performance. So, as you can see, Shanahan has three straight seasons of supporting uh, a running back one uh, positional, I guess, running back one performance in PPR format. So you take a guy like McKinnon, who has that receiving skill set, that's really what his game is. It's get him into the open field, let him rack up some yak. I mean, I think he could really dominate in this offense. Now, the 49ers project to be much better this season than they were last year, but that ought to mean that McKinnon has more shots at some touchdowns if he does trade off some of that target work uh, that Hyde got last season. So you know, what am I doing with McKinnon? Um, I'm I'm definitely buying him. I would pay a mid first for him. I think he slots in, you know, depending in the, in the rules and settings of your league and how deep your league is, how many running backs you can start. I could see paying anywhere from, you know, 105 to, to 108 comfortably for McKinnon on the basis that over the next two seasons, I expect him to, to really compete as a running back one in PPR format. So uh, now...